Uh, sometimes they would be made out of mostly muslin and edged in lace because it was the cheaper material hidden and then you would just see the lace at the edge. So, this would be something that would be completely inappropriate for anybody but my family members to see. I am essentially in the beginning of what would be considered my underwear, as it goes under everything. Still at the same house party, I have gone upstairs to change. I would not be dressed like this in public even with my best friends. I would only wear this garment in my dressing chambers. Only. Bedroom and dressing room. That is it. Um, I wear my petticoat for modesty's sake for a couple of reasons. Even if I have an opaque gown, I still want to wear it uh, just as an extra layer. Modesty again. An extra layer for warmth if it's chilly. In this case, you can't really tell until you're really up on it that dress is very thin. A lot of the garments I wear are quite sheer and quite thin. What's the fashion at the time? To have a very nice clear muslin is what they called it. Maybe a, a nice net dress. I would have to have something underneath that. They weren't all necessarily lined. This is what I would wear. It is essentially another dress. Sometimes petticoats had bodices like this one does. Sometimes the bodice of the dress itself would be lined, in which you would have a petticoat two straps, a skirt. Uh, you could also see them, if the weather had been a little more foul, uh, I might consider wearing one, or had it been foul previously and the ground might be a little bit questionable, a lot of petticoats would have trim at the hem, uh, because you, what you would do to save your nice dress, your traipsing through mud, is you would pick up the nice dress and let the petticoat have the brunt of it, but if you're showing your underwear a little bit like that, you want it to be pretty, right? You don't want just gross utilitarian garment showing so that you would be made fun of. Now, who here is familiar with Pride and Prejudice? Raise your hand. The book or the movie? Either one is fine. Do you remember the line, her hands are six inches deep in mud at least? In the book, it says, her hands were six inches deep in mud at least, and her skirt slit down, or no, what is it? Her skirt let down not doing its service or its job. I cannot remember it verbatim. What they're talking about was, her petticoat hems were six inches deep in mud, and her dress let down was not hiding it. So she had picked up her dress, traced through that mud to save the dress, and let the petticoat get dirty. So that's a really great example of what I'm talking about. Uh, it was easy to take off things like lace and ruffles to wash the garment and then reattach them because you could not wash your petticoat with the lace attached. If anyone here has seen laundry of the period, uh, it's very abusive um, and very bad for the garments and things like that. Again, uh, another use of a petticoat would be to protect the gown from yourself. Protecting it from your own body oils and things like that. Um, I'll mention a little bit later about uh, keeping oneself clean, but that was very important. You cannot wash these clothes. Uh, Jean Austen mentions in, uh, I think actually, it might have been Cassandra or Jane. It was a letter between the two. Cassandra had just had a gown dyed blue and then washed. When she went to take it from the line, it came apart in her hands. The fabrics were so thin and so delicate, and the, the laundry process, and even dyeing process, so bad on the clothing that it couldn't take it. That gown, should it become dirty, as it's a big wool gown, it would be gently brushed. You would wait until the uh, mud or whatever was dry, and then you could brush it out. Grease stains are removed chalk. Uh, and so men's coats, if they became muddy or, or dirty while riding, you have these stiff bristle brushes and you just brush it clean. Almost never would they get washed. Uh, if it smelled, you would air it. Just take it out and let it air. Which, by the way, um, living proof, that works wonders. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? Let it out on a nice warm spring day, let the wind blow through it, it works a treat. Uh, so when my petticoat uh, closes in the back as well, to keep a nice clean unbroken line in the front of my garment, which having a high necked um, back closing gown is important. I almost got this one. Usually I'm very good at this. I've had a lot of practice. One of these days I'll wise up and stop having garments I close in the back. Darius, could you help me get this last one? <laughs> I feel like something has happened to the hook and eye. Uh, this gar uh, the, my dress also closes in the back of the series of hooks and eyes, which is very popular. Uh, clothes could also be closed with pins, straight pins, which was uh, a very common way for garments to be closed, especially in the 18th century. Thank you, dear. So, all these poor things. Got no ruffles. 
Now you'll also notice the difference. My petticoat is pretty thick. It, it will stand up to multiple washings. I have not picked a, uh, a flimsy material for that sort of thing. Running out of space. Good news is I'm, I'm almost <laughs> finished roofing clothes. Um, the last thing I'll be taking off. Uh, this is a very touchy subject with a lot of people. Whenever they see these, they immediately think torture device. Oh, it's a torture device. Oh, it stays corsets. Oh, they're terrible. Why do you wear them? Why do women of the past do that to themselves? Stop. If any of you are thinking those words, erase it from your mind right now. Or I shall be forced to never speak to you again. When you think of support garments, I do not want the thoughts of Gone with the Wind or Pirates of the Caribbean to enter your mind for one second. There was no I can't breathe. There was no get me down to 19 inches. Granted, Gone with the Wind was a few years later than me. Even by that time, what we would think of as tight lacing was not a popular thing. It was the exception and not the rule. Not very many women did it. Social climbers, uh, extreme occasions like court dress, the only time you would place moderately tight, but not in this time period. In my time, that is not a thing. Because these garments are not meant to cinch in a waist at all. In fact, I ate a probably obscenely large supper and managed to eat it all and be quite alright. The only purpose of this garment, let's see if we can find the most delicate way of saying this. Gentlemen, don't giggle. The only purpose of this garment is to lift and separate the bust. Although I am missing a very vital piece of mine, um, and you actually be able to see it when I have it laid out. There is a pocket sewn down the front, which is a big wooden piece, about that big, and about that thick, goes straight down the front. And that has a few purposes. It flattens the line of my stomach, and sometimes after a large meal that is necessary, because you saw how that dress hung. It was very flat, and it was close to the body. This kind of helped control on any of that that was necessary. I'm not cinching in at the waist. That is not a requirement for me. I'm not trying to compress the hips. I'm not trying to compress anything. In fact, this is all very soft. The only, uh, there's a couple of cords here, a couple of cords here, and some boning in the back to keep the channel straight. But other than that, and the bus, there's nothing that's doing any damage or anything like that. The only purpose of these was to, to help follow the feminine form on its trend of lifting the bust. And by 1815, 16, 17, and 18 was extreme. It got very high. Ladies, this does not happen in nature. I don't care how young and well-formed you are, it just doesn't. These days were necessity. The thought of, of running around without them was very uncouth. You would be considered a loose woman if you went without your stays. Even the working class, and your deserving and sometimes undeserving poor, had the form of stays. It is your preserve of the time. It is a support garment, it is for propriety and modesty, and it is a necessity to have underneath your clothing. Mine are very plain, very boring, but they can be very ornate. Embroider, beautiful cording patterns, and things like that. Because, let's be honest ladies, we like pretty underwear, don't we? <laughs> Even if nobody ever sees it, we like to feel pretty underwear. I know some of you are going, no, that's done. Yeah, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the disadvantage to having these clothes, and you could, here are some ways that you could tell that I am a relatively wealthy woman. Although I have the um, incredible skill of being able to mostly get in and out of my clothing by myself, uh, these are all clothing that were, would require a lady fate to get me in and out of. Um, I have been known to lace up my own stays, and that's where the string is hung. Uh, but I prefer not to because I'm not a contortionist and I'm getting a little bit uh, along there to be able to bend myself in such ways and manners. Now I'll show you once I can get it. Oh, I probably should have showed you when it was laced up. It will be a little too cold now. Uh, it is something that's called spiral laced, which means it doesn't lace crisscross like this. It laces in a spiral like that. And that was how clothes in this period were laced stays and undergarments and things like that. Even my boots are laced like that. Uh, it is the most efficient way to do it. <coughs> I still can't believe it to be gentlemen and not to wear it. I mean, this right here is 
is, would be the worst of the worst, because hey, by the way, this is my underwear. Let's just let that sink in for a minute. This would be it. This is it. I'll just give that a minute. I get that question a lot, actually. And by this time, there was another undergarment that was an option called pantalets, uh, which a lot of people think are bloomers. Uh, a whole other, that's a whole other 50 years in the future talk I could give you about the, what a, bloomer, a pair of bloomers really are. I'll give you the brief rundown. It is not an underwear. Uh, Amelia Bloomer was a woman who decided it was a really cool idea for women to wear pants. So she came up with something called bloomers, but they are not drawers, which is what we think of. Pantalets would be like drawers. Yes, they did exist, uh, but they were not quite as popular. Uh, in this time period, as they started to become further long, uh, you will forgive me I put on my dressing gown because being so dangerously exposed is a little bit beyond me. Well, actually, I'll undo it for a little bit so I can show you. This is my shift, or my chemise. So you don't worry, <coughs> leotard underneath, no one's going to see anything. Uh, this is my shift or chemise and will be the last garment closest to my skin. In my case, uh, I'm not a woman who is enfeebled and needs to wear flannel pantalets or anything like that. Uh, these would usually be made of a heavy-duty cotton or linen, and a woman would have a lot of them. Even poor women would have a lot of them, because you would just go through them like tissues, if you think about it. Uh, it is protecting me from my clothes and my clothing from me. Uh, the body oils tend to destroy clothes very quickly, and you don't want to stain any of your very nice clothes that you could not wash. Um, sanitation in this time period is not quite like it is today. Which is not to say that they never washed and got their bath one year, uh, one day a year, whether they needed it or not. It was much more frequent than that, and women did take care of themselves. It was just a different method, and so the clothes needed to be able to accommodate for that. It was a lot of sponge bathing and things like that. Uh, it was considered unhealthy to fully submerge oneself in water. Granted, some of the uh, nobility, gentry, and royalty did it. Most of the common folk didn't think it was a great idea on the planet. So, your clothes, again, you need to accommodate that. You'd have a lot of shifts and you would go through them. You'd at least have one a day. Uh, even poor women would have multiples. They'd usually be made at home. It would be one of the garments that even a non-skilled woman can make. Even if you were not a uh, man to a maker, you could make a shift because it is a series of squares and rectangles. Shifts and men's shirts were usually made at home and were also the first mass-produced garment you could buy in a store at a milliner shop. Um, a milliner could make and sell large quantities of shirts and chips. Uh, mine has a bit of lace on the bottom. I don't know for those in the back uh, that you can see it, but that's all right. Um, you can come up later and see it. Because again, ladies, we like to feel pretty. My husband is away at war, so who's going to see it? No one. See it? <laughs> I like to feel pretty. I like to see lace and things like that. Uh, and then, of course, are the essential things. And I'm going to have a very hard time with it because usually I have it set up where there's an aisle I can walk up and down and show you. So those in the back, you just have to take my words for it. You in the front, you picked wisely. Because we're going to talk about my stockings and my boots. <laughs> 